Here it is, the Nintendo Switch. It's the company's first new console in almost four and a half years, and it's a hybrid console, which means this thing right here is pretty much the entire thing. It can be docked so you can use it with your television or you can take it with you wherever you go. It works really well. The docking and undocking takes just seconds. So I've been using the Switch on my commute every day and it's awesome to be able to bring a huge game like Zelda Breath of the Wild with me wherever I go. And because it boots up so quick, you're never really waiting around for loading times. Now, you're definitely going to need a case if you plan on bringing it around. So Nintendo sent me their official one that goes for $20, but there will be plenty more at launch from third-party manufacturers. So on a single charge, it's going to give you roughly two and a half hours, and I've been getting about three with Zelda, but different games are probably going to give you different battery life. So overall, the Switch feels great. The screen is really nice. It's arguably the best build quality that's ever come out of Nintendo. And even the operating system is really clean, quick, and smartly laid out. Switch lets you play in a number of different ways. You can remove these Joy-Con controllers from the tablet and use them in the included grip, or just go commando in either hand. They need power too, but they last a while and charge when they're docked with the tablet. My biggest hang up with these Joy-Con controllers were that they're really small. Now, I've got big hands and they felt a little cramped when they're on the grip. Sometimes I wound up hitting buttons that I didn't really mean to. Thankfully, there is this. This is the Pro Switch controller. It's the best way to play Zelda, but it's 70 damn dollars. You can also use the Switch as a tabletop monitor by propping it up with its kickstand. Now, the kickstand is not the best, and if you bump into the table it's resting on, it might fall over. It's really only going to work on a hard, flat surface. But more importantly, it's going to be tough playing a game further than like two feet away. Maybe other games will fare better, but you can't really read anything when you're that far away from the screen. It's tough imagining a few people comfortably crowding around this thing the way Nintendo had been pitching it. Also, you can't charge it when it's standing up. You're going to have to hold it in your hands. So while we're getting what's likely the best Nintendo launch game ever, we're also getting a fairly bare-bones launch. Now, we're recording this a few days before Switch comes out, and right now, there is no online features or virtual console to download legacy titles. We also don't know much about how the Switch's online service is going to work, but a preview for it is going to hit later on in March. And then there's the fact that, well, there aren't really any compelling games available at launch. But it is great to hear that Nintendo is working with independent developers and that there'll be up to 60 indie games for Switch by the end of the year. I mean, let's be honest, Zelda is the highlight here, right? Thankfully though, it's amazing. But is it worth getting a Switch just to play it? I'm not sure. I mean, you're talking $360 to play the new Zelda game. Now, there's a lot we still don't know about Switch. I like this console a lot because it delivers on its hybrid pitch. There's a lot of potential here too, and I can't wait to play games like Super Mario Odyssey. But because there's still so much that isn't here, the games, the online, the apps, the virtual console, it's entirely reasonable to hold off on a purchase.